Hi there, uh, my name is Adam Compton and uh, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be taking a slightly different adventure. Today we're going to be looking at doing sort of a let's code. Um, I'm going to be starting from the beginning, working my way up through various different stages or different types of web scraping uh, programs here, all written in Python. Uh, something from very basic to something a little more complex down the road. So let's go ahead and get started here. Let's go ahead and uh, start out with uh, let's just call it web script. Yeah, that'll be fine. I use VI for all my editing. You can use whatever you wish, but I use VI or Vim as the case is. So let's go ahead and include in a simple little import here. If I can type right. So once we have that in, then we can do something like I don't know. Um, R equals request dot get and then you pass in let's specify some URL here URL equals uh, HTTPS colon slash slash um, what's a good one here let's go for Google uh, www.google.com all right so nothing fancy there uh, so let's just grab for URL then let's do, I don't know, print uh, r.text. Like I said, very simple, nothing complex there. Let's go ahead and run Python 3 on that. And do we get anything back? Yes, okay, so it worked. Like I said, that was very, very simple, nothing very complex in there at all. You could use that and do a lot of stuff with it. But we're going to take that a little bit different, a uh, different uh, approach now. Uh, let's add a little bit of extra handling in here. I don't like putting the URL on hard coded in there, so let's import sys. Let's go on down here and let's do uh, what is that? If uh, main equals main, then let's do url equals sys.rv sub 1 pass it in on the command line and then we can do let's go up here and define this as a function uh, define uh, get url we'll pass in a url for that and then let's delete that out there and instead of that, let's just return that. Actually, let's add a little bit of error handling in here as well. If uh, the length of sys.arg uh, v is not equal to 2, then let's uh, print usage python 3 and percent s and then we say url and this is going to be uh, sys.arg v sub 0 okay then we'll exit out sys.exit so if they don't add in the proper uh, command line option, it's going to error out, print the use of statement and print out. Assuming they have it, uh, then we will go ahead and do that. And then we will say r equals, uh, what was that, or text. Let's just call it text, that's fine. Get URL of URL. I can type. Then we will print the URL or print the text. All right, let's go ahead and try this. And let's go web scrape. Let's just run like that. And I have an error in there. What did I do wrong here? Oh, my mistake. Let's see what it is there. That's name. Uh, like I said, this is live coding here. So let's see what we got. Okay, it tells me that. So let's go ahead and now put the HTTPS. Let's go for facebook.com this time and see what we get. 
lots more stuff. So something is working there. Great. So let's jump back in here. Is there anything else we want to handle at this time? Uh, not right now. So, okay. Let's uh, make this a little more full featured. So what can we do from here? Let's add in a little more air handling, like I said. So instead of just going straight into that, let's say, let's define, oh, that's right, right here would be fine. Uh, if r.status code equals 200, and then we say text equals r.text. Otherwise, let's just say text equals none. And down here we can return text. Okay, so what we're doing there is we're actually saying, um, oh, wait, set it to none or whatever. So it just cleans it up a little bit, adds a little bit of error handling in there, nothing too fancy. Uh, is there anything else we can do at this point? Uh, we could start specifying some other stuff in there, but this is it as a basic approach to it. If you wanted to do some basic web scripting here, you can do that. You can do something like, um, if not URL, then return none. Um, so if you don't even pass in a URL, but we should be handling that down here by controlling that. So not a big deal. Uh, something you can do, not that it's ever going to be a case, but URL equals URL.strip. That will remove any beginning and trailing uh, white space on it. So not a big deal there. Let's go ahead and move that up in front of here. Nah, that's good right where it was. Okay. So at this point, we have a working one. Now we could do a few other things in here because the request.get can also pass in headers and a bunch of other stuff in there. Uh, one of the first things I'd like to add in here is a timeout. Uh, sometimes these can take a while. So let's go ahead and set timeout to five uh, so that it won't take too long for it to finish. It'll try and then it'll air out if it takes way too long. Okay, so that's fine. So now let's go ahead and uh, one of the other things you can do is you can set a header. Uh, if you're doing scraping, why would you, let's, I'm just going to make a variable called header, or headers, it's fine. Um, okay, we'll just do it right here. All right, why would you want to create a set of headers to pass in like this? Well, first and foremost, the main one is user agent. Sometimes some of these pages that you're trying to scrape doesn't want to uh, actually uh, resolve for you to get the information to you if it's an invalid user agent, stuff like that. So um, you can specify that in here. So I'm going to go ahead and set here and put a user agent. And I'm just going to specify. I've got one up here I can copy and paste over. Let's see here. Let's go ahead and do that. Back in there. There we go. So now I can pass that in and it's all good. Let's go ahead and get back out and try it again. Just Facebook and I have a typo. So I'm 17. I forgot my colon. Let's go ahead and try that again. And lots of typos. And now, yes, yay, it still works, good. So we can handle it that way. Uh, one of the other things you can do in there is you can specify the refer. If I can type right, and what is the default one that people use on here? Um, I guess a uh, default one that people would try to use would be something along the lines of, https www.google.com because a lot of uh, sites um, you'll search for something you'll find it on Google and you go to it and that's the refer is there uh, sometimes the refer isn't there people were guessing like oh you came directly here they might not 
They might think it's a web scraping tool again, so they'll try to block it. The idea here is we're trying to get around some of the issues that might be trying to block you. Uh, setting a user agent, setting a referrer, stuff like that is one way to get around this. So we have that in place now. Um, okay, nothing uh, too fancy, nothing too much out of the way there. Uh, one of the things you could do is, well, fine, let's say we have this working. Now what can we do? We can do def um, Let's just say we want to parse out some of the links and we're going to give it uh, some text to parse links out of. So the best tool that I've found to do this is um, called a beautiful soup. So let's go from uh, B S4 import beautiful soup. And there's another one here called soup strainer. Interesting names, I know, but just bear with me, they work out very well. Uh, in here as well, is that all that I'm needing right now? Yeah, okay, that'll work. So, down here in the parse links, so we get that in. Um, next thing we're gonna to need to do is, oh no, okay, assuming we got text. If we have text, then what do we do? Well, you're gonna say something like, uh, for link in, Soup, we're defining, nah, declaring the constructor here or using it, passing in the text. Um, we're telling it's going to be HTML parser. Oh, parse, what is that? Underscore only equals it. Now, here's where we're using soup strainer. That's about right. Yeah, I think that is. And we're telling it we only want the A records. Only want the A records that have an href. There we go. Now, we have the links. That's right, so we have those. We're just gonna double check in here if link dot has ATTR, has attribute on href. There's a lot of extra code in here that probably could get removed, but I'm just using it as is. Now we're gonna say if link sub href, and I'll, this is doing is just saying okay you have an href attribute but is there anything in there so that's what that's checking for assuming there is now now we'll just we we'll just declare a local variable here a link because at this point we should have something actually there uh, just in case we'll screw up any beginning and trailing characters off of it all right uh, oh, let's just do this to be easier um, yeah, we'll forget that for now. Here, we'll just go print uh, href. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, that'll work. So, jump down here. Instead of print text, we will close that out. And now we will call parse links on text. Facebook.com. Okay, so we can see all these different links coming in here. So these are all the links that are on the page. That's pretty good there. Let's try a different one. Let's try, uh, like I said, let's go rapid7.com this time. See what we can get. All right. So we have some external links, some internal links. We have some mail to, some telephone links. All right, so maybe we should take care of some of those. First, we'll start with the uh, internal links. Uh, the only way we can handle that is if we know what the URL is that we're dealing with. So let's go ahead and pass that in as well. Let's go down here and just tell it to pass in the URL. All right. So how am I handling this? Oh, let's just go in here. So if each ref, what is it? If 
not href dot starts with http comments much slash and not href dot starts with https then href equals url plus href and let's try that so that works better for us there we go looking much better uh, some of those like you see right there is myth is missing a slash so we need to account for that we also need to see our mail to and stuff like that is wrong so mm, how are we going to do that first let's fix the mail to let's go and not href dot starts with now to colon and not href dot starts with tail colon so let's see if that fits those yep so those are looking much better now that's better so let's go and fix the other ones so how am I doing that? All right, maybe right here. So if href dot if not href dot starts with a slash. So if it doesn't, if the href itself doesn't start with a slash at this point, we know it doesn't start with HTTP or HTTPS or anything else. So we want to add it in there um, if it's not a mail to or tail. So if we do the slash, then we do href equals href. Then we add that in there. Okay. So that should take care of that case right there. So good. Um, but that's with me searching for that now. Did that instead with a slash on the end what happens we get double slashes okay we need to count for that so go back up here and let's say if URL and you check if the URL is present and the URL minus one the last character of URL is a slash then we say URL equals URL bracket colon negative one. Everything but the last character. So let's try the way it was originally. Still looks good. Let's try it with the slash. Still looks good. Great. So let's go ahead and clear screen. So now we what do we have? We have it grabbing URL, right? Grabbing everything it needs into there and parsing the links out. That, like I said, I'm not putting any comments in here. I'm just doing it bare, straightforward. That, that will work as is right there, and we're good down here. Let's go back up here to this uh, the headers for a moment. Let's see what we can do up here. Um, easy one is the refer. That should generally work. Uh, easy one, this is, is an easy piece of code that we can add in here. Let's go with that. Get refer. Now let's pass in the URL because you'll see why here in a second. Let's go refer equals HTTP. And let's go in www.google.com. We're just going to keep using Google here, which is totally fine. But we might augment that. So we're going to need to include something else here called URL parse. I'll come back to that in a second. Let's figure out what the host, as I'm typing through this, I'll explain it. If I can type, we're going to parse out the URL looking for just the host name of it. What that'll do is it'll take whatever URL that's passed in, no matter how complex it is, it just pulls out the host name for it. Okay, so we have that. Now we're going to find what the top level domain is for it, and that's going to be hostname.split on 
periods and we're going to look for the last one in the array okay now if not top level domain equals com so if the top level domain is not a com then we will say ref plus equals so we're going to append a period to it and we're going to append the tld what this does is uh if say we're doing one that targets i don't know um some foreign country uh they're pakistan's like that i don't know it ends in dot pk it ends in dot uh r a um u a whatever the 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 final tld is on there it's going to take that and append it to the google up here so it's going to be www.google.com.pk something like that. so it looks like it's coming from the right google at least like i said super simple there nothing super complex and what we're going to change here is then just say get ref of the url there and that's just going to return that oh i need to do return on ref but we need to declare parse up here so what is that let me look it up real quick from url uh, lib.parse import url parse okay let's try it again see if we get the same result or if i type but nope we got a good one so that's fine now user agent we can uh, probably do something with that too actually if we jump back out to the in here and we'll look we'll jump into misc here we have ua file it is a massive file of different user agents we have some for mozilla uh what else opera there's going to be some for oh, well that's all we have for right now that'll be fine so nothing too complex in there but you can grab those yourself so let me just copy that down Okay, let's go back and edit the file because let's just say I want to grab a random one out there every time so it changes it up for me so instead of this let's delete that and go get user agent doesn't need to pass anything just add a comma so let's go down here to create a new function get user agent and how we're going to do this uh user agent is just going to be blank by default nothing fancy um user agent file that we're going to be pulling it in from what is that ua file.txt is what i called it good if i can do that okay So let's go ahead and open and read in that file. Well, let's do a try. Try accept. Or try, yeah. Try accept. I'm lazy. I'm just going to do general exception there. Place that in there. And oh, print. Now. And get UA there. That's straightforward enough. And uh, let's just print out a string of exception. All right. Um, yeah, that'll be fine for now. So in here uh, with open of the UA file. F of lines equal F dot read lines. Is that right? Lines equals So we've read in all the lines, uh, then we can do if lines 
Where is it? If width of lines is greater than zero, good. And it doesn't do any good if there's not more than one, not more than zero in there. Um, we're going to be using another tool here. We're going to be using um, uh, NumPy, NumPy, or how you want to pronounce it, N-U-M-P-Y. It's great for mathematics and just a bunch of math stuff in there. Great algorithms, super fast. I'm just going to use it here. So, um, so what is Python random number generator equals NumPy dot random dot random in state. Uh, you could just use the built-in random function here. I like this better. Let's go on. Index equals uh, prng dot permutation. Permutation of length of lines uh, minus one. Just the number of different permutations you have to work with there. Um, Two equals numpy dot as ray x. Probably shouldn't have called that idx and idx2. It'll get confusing. Uh, data type equals numpy dot integer. Like I said, you can do this much simpler with just the built-in um, random function. I like this one just because I've done it so many times user agent equals line sub int of id x2 is that right then let's return ua so let's print the ua as well Just see what we get when we call that. Actually, don't need to do that. Let's just jump all the way down here and let's comment out this line for a moment. And this one. Let's just call print get UA. Let's just call it a few times here. See if I, ah, did not include that. So just, yeah. It's working good. Uh, one thing I should probably do here is dot strip just to make sure. Never hurts. All right. So we have a user agent now. We have a refer. Uh, we have the ability to do all of that. Check if it is return code two. And. So we have a fairly complete one right here. Um, what else could we do? Well, if we go back into that misc directory. You'll see I had two other things in here. Uh, some more on the proxy files. These are just a couple of proxy files I downloaded off the internet. They are probably going to be obsolete relatively soon, but they are some open anonymous HTTP and HTTPX. Um, proxies so if we wanted to we could do um, something like we're doing with the user agent to pick out a proxy here so it's copy this um what am i going to call it uh or is the proxies here so let's go ahead and where's the user agent one here let's go one two And 
instead of UA, we call it proxy. And oops. Let's do that. First I'm gonna let's do um HTTP proxy equals nothing. Let's change this to proxy file. This is not going to be the cleanest, but it will work. So let's go ahead and read that in. Grab a random HTTP proxy from the proxy file uh, from Cloud Exception and get proxies. I don't want to return. I want to. And I don't want to use UA there. I want to do HTTP proxy. So I needed to change that anyway right here. Uh, just because I like to have them both in there, I'll do HTTPS proxy, HTTPS, or just proxy file is fine. Do this SSL, there you go. Just the proxy. Push this to HTTPS. Then let's do Proxies equals then I would take HTTP colon HTTP proxy comma take HTTPS HTTPS proxy. I think that is right. Let's jump back down to the bottom here and commit these two back out again. Let's just call print get proxies. Let's see if it works. Uh, There. Okay. Ah, I got the new lines in there. Let's um, fix that. Documents trip. Documents trip. All right, there you go. So every time we run it, you're probably going to get a different one if you had a large enough file. I got a small file, so that's not going to necessarily be it. So, so let's go ahead and edit this again. So I have a way to grab that. That's there. Okay, that's fine. So the way you would use that then is you go all the way back up here to where the headers are. You need to find do proxies equals get proxies and let's jump all the way back down here get rid of that exit that out exit that out try again are we gonna grab it this time notice it's taking much longer uh, because and wow we timed out all right let's try a different one here Hopefully it'll grab a different uh, proxy. Try one or two more times here. See, oh, there it goes. So uh, as you can see, different proxies have different uh, results there. Um, so you could script something like this up. So if you had a very large, um, let's go to back to Google. See what we have there. Yeah, Google. I have no idea what that is. But uh, if you had a very large um, set of proxies you could possibly use, this would work very well. Um, so yeah, so you can do there, you can pull all these out. So this is one way you can do that. So let's clear screen. So jump back 
up to the top. What do I have here? I have, uh, oh, actually, there's one other thing. Let's import time. Um, this isn't going to be a big one right here, but there's another function you could probably implement if you really wanted to. Let's go def um, pause. Uh, okay. How is this? There's a syntax on this. Let me look it up again. Don't remember. I'll just do my delays equals, I don't know, uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Doesn't matter what you put in here. I'm just setting a small little array of them there. Then I'm going to do you know, the delay I want to set. I'll explain this in a second. Dot. Sorry, using NumPy. And then I'm. And then time dot sleep. What this is, is it's saying I want to sleep some amount of time. That time is going to be a random choice out of this array. So, where would you use this? Well, you would use something like this if you're going all the way down here to the bottom, where instead of doing get URL, let's say you had another function called get URLs, and you passed in a URL file, a file of multiple URLs um, that you wanted to pull those links from or something like that. You could do this, and then in there, each one of those, well, let's go ahead and script something like this up. Uh, so yeah, let's do get URLs. Will that work? Yeah, why not? Let's jump all the way back up here to get URL. Okay. Let's go. Get URLs. Then we pass in URL file. Uh, if not URL file, return none, that'd be fine. That uh, should never happen. So let's just do very similar to what we had here. One, two. I'm just copy back and forth anymore. Not going to use nearly any of that, but uh, so. Lines, open lines, okay. Assuming we have more than one line, so I like putting in my air handling here. There we go. Uh, return links. Let's do that. Or return. I'm sure that'll be an interesting one. Um, Let's just do this then. We're not going to be doing it in the exact same order we were doing it. So in here, let's go ahead and delete all of that. We don't need that. So if there's more than one, more than no lines in there, then we're going to say uh, text equals get URL of the line or here or line in lines there. That then we're gonna say what was the one that we were doing? Get ref, no, parse links. Basically this line right here. Get back up here. Here. Parse links on text and the not now it's not long URL, it's line. All right, then we would do that pause. Okay, and that will be it. So what is this doing? It is taking in a URL file. And then it is saying get URLs on it. We're not actually returning anything anymore, so that's fine. But this is just an example of how these things can change. So 
get URLs comes in and it opens URL file, reads in the lines, and then it causes get URL on each one, gets the text back, it parses the links, then it pauses, then it repeats for the next one, the next one, next one, so forth. So, um, so fiat vim, um, I don't know, um, urls.txt. Let's do going to air out. It may air out on some of these because some of these um oh yeah. So let's just try it again. It's airing out when I get the uh valley connection or the max connections on the proxies. So let's go ahead here and let's disable that for right now. All the way to the top. Let's disable the different proxies. So, I've tried this a few times and I've probably uh, saturated those. So, let's try it. Ah, there again. Girls. Strip. from Google and there should be more coming up. The ones from Rapid7. Pausing in between each one, some random amount between 2 to 20. And as you can see how this is playing through. Let's go ahead and let that finish. So this is a quick little uh, let's code um, experiment I was trying here to see how well this would work out. Writing up a little web scraper while we're all just chatting away here or while I'm chatting away. Uh, there's the Facebook one. And uh, so, yeah, it was a fun little experiment on my part. If people would like this, please let me know in the comments. Um, if you actually stuck around to the end here, that's great. Uh, if not, oh well, I guess you're not hearing this comment. But if you'd like to see more of uh, me uh, trying to do some coding on the side here, uh, something sort of real time, you want me to do it over like a, an interactive uh, YouTube session or Twitch or whatever the case is, I don't know. Uh, where people would interact with me. I can try to set something of that up if you wish. Um, but yeah, I thought this was pretty fun. Started out for something very simple, kept building on it until we actually have something a little more complex here. And um, you could use something like this and build on it and keep going. I will have all this code available in uh, on my GitHub page. I'll have a link in the description below. As always, if you enjoyed this, hit the like button. If you want to be updated when new ones come out, any of my videos, hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon. And as always, thank you and have an awesome day.